Hi, this is Jared from Shunome, and today we're going to talk about ARCHICAD 26. So this is my review of ARCHICAD 26. I'm not going to cover every feature, not going to cover every aspect, but I want to talk about the parts of ARCHICAD 26 that I find most valuable or that I want improved. One of the concerns about ARCHICAD 26 is there's not a ton of features for the common user. This is also a concern that has been made about the past couple of versions of ARCHICAD. So before we talk about 26, let's just look back at 23, 24, and 25. And so ARCHICAD 23 had a couple of huge features that to me make ARCHICAD 23 vastly superior to earlier versions. The opening tool and the revisions to the column and beam tool. So the opening tool, especially create opening from selection, transformed the way I use ARCHICAD. I have some videos on this, but the way you can use the opening tool to cut holes through a skin like a siding skin of a building, which is how I work. Just fantastic. Beam and column tools similarly have segmented columns and beams have just transformed the way I work with ARCHICAD and opened up so many cool modeling options. I've got lots of videos on it, talk about it all the time. Those three things, regardless of anything else that came in ARCHICAD 23, make 23 superior to what came before, as I said. ARCHICAD 24, nothing. Okay, there was merge polylines and Graphisoft included the structural and MEP integration, but structural and MEP in ARCHICAD is irrelevant to my day-to-day -day work. Maybe someday it'll be useful, but there's no change. So to me, ARCHICAD 23 and 24 were the same. ARCHICAD 25 initially felt the same way, nothing too different other than new cabinets. But by the end of ARCHICAD 25 update two, and especially rebuilding this list and looking back at it, there's quite a few things there that I now actually really like. And so that's the point of this looking back at the other versions. Right now I have a short list of things in ARCHICAD 26 that are improvements over the earlier version. But I wonder if after using ARCHICAD 26 for a year, there'll be some other minor features that I find valuable. So below are the updates to ARCHICAD 26 that we're going to talk about. I don't mention here that the opening tool can now have its sides and back overridden. I forgot to mention that in the later part of this video, but that's a nice addition to the opening tool. Now, coming in ARCHICAD 26 update 2, there's already been announced some UI and UX improvements, and EcoDesigner Star will be included. This, you can learn more about it on the Graphsoft community page, and I talk about the UI and UX improvements a little bit later in the video. EcoDesigner Star, I'm really intrigued by because I haven't used it in about a decade, and I'm really curious if I can find ways to integrate it into my workflows. I'm a little pessimistic about it just because it's a totally different thing from what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, but I'm excited to have that option in ARCHICAD. Before we look at the different features of ARCHICAD 26, I almost forgot to say, please like and subscribe, click the little bell for notifications for future videos, and most importantly, hit that like button to say thank you to my daughter, Madeline. Thank you, Madeline, for editing this video. This is a complex, tricky one to put together. It's all chopped up behind the scenes. No one else to see that, but you and me. Thank you, Madeline. You're great. Folders for attributes are one of the biggest features of ARCHICAD 26. Initially, I was excited. Then I learned more about them, and I got a little disappointed, and then I actually started using them, and I found they're actually pretty good. Not perfect, but nice. So we ha now have folders for layers, surfaces, building materials, composites, and profiles. And they are actually pretty great for organizing the attributes into more manageable chunks. So you can see here under my surfaces, I've got you know concrete, metals, etc. And what I've done for my template is just mimic my previous organization. So for instance, let me go here and show you that we can, uh, instead of look at the attribute palette from this Folder view, we can switch it and just say, just show me the surfaces just listed out. So this is kind of, this is what my ARCHICAD 25 template looked like. So I had dummy attributes as headers, and I had everything listed below. And this worked really well. It's a long list. So now in ARCHICAD 25, I've just taken you know this and put it into a folder. So you can see here, that's that same stuff, much more manageable. Unfortunately, with the attributes and folders, we still need these dummy headers because two reasons. One, folders right now are just for organization. They don't do anything else. So you can't use them for find and select criteria. You can't use them for criteria for schedules, and you can't use them for criteria for graphic overrides. 
which is a huge missed opportunity to bummer. Hopefully Graphsoft is listening and will add that feature in the future because that would be fantastic. Now, the other problem with relying solely on folders for attribute management is folders don't show up everywhere. So over here on the right, here's an example. Where this is, is under doors and windows. If you go to say frame and leaf surfaces or really anything in the door and window settings, you go here and you're just getting the surfaces, you're not getting folders. So if you don't have these dummy surfaces for organization, this just gets a lot harder to see. But that said, overall, I think if the only difference between ARCHICAD 25 and 26 was folder organization, it's worth using 26 because folders I'm finding are making my experience of using ARCHICAD 26 better. Are they perfect? Are they everything I wanted them to be? No, but it's still an improvement. Okay. The next big feature in ARCHICAD 26, and right, big features in air quotes, right? Because it's not earth shattering, but it's still great, uh, is the search feature. So now in many places throughout ARCHICAD, and I think in update two, there'll be even more places, you've got the search feature where you can start typing something, say, you know, concrete, and it's going to start giving you everything with concrete, right? So if you're searching for a site layer or something with site, all that stuff starts coming up. And so it just makes it really easy to find. This also is the, in the flyout of the favorites. And so if you start typing here, you're going to get just what you're typing. Anywhere it is, I've been really happy with it. So the search feature shows up in a lot of places. One example where it's really nice is say the wall tool. When I go click on this composite to pick a new composite, automatically the search box is highlighted so I can just start typing you know, two by four and it comes out. Now, two things to note about the search feature with this fly out is one, you have to type exactly what's there. So I can't do two by four insulation because I don't have any composites called that. My composites are two by four comma insulation. So you have to type the exact string. It's not going to find bits and pieces. Currently in ARCHICAD 26, if you look down here, the width of this flyout is set. So you actually can't read what any of these composites are. That's a huge bummer. This I'm led to believe is one of the UI UX fixes that is coming in ARCHICAD update two. So if you're hesitant about using ARCHICAD 26, you could wait to update two, or you can migrate suffer for a little bit and then have this feature fixed. Fortunately, the workaround I've found in the meantime is one, if you hover your mouse over it, you'll get the full flyout with all the name. The other thing is you have the thickness and then you have the preview picture over here. So if I'm looking for a two by six wall insulated, with the two by four, it's probably this one because it's four and a half inches. This one's six and a half. So that's two by six. Not great, right? But it's usable and it's, I seems like we're getting that fixed. So that's folders. And that's search feature. Oh, the other thing about search feature is again, it's in the navigator. This I found is really great. You've got this long list of things and you're looking for say an interior elevation. Now you've got that all popped up. A better example is I can type an elevation and you can see, okay, I've got my elevations. I got my interior elevations here. Then I've got my colored ones here. So I have in my template interior elevations that have color turned on. I have for like schematic design, and then I have my regular elevations that are more black and white up here. Typing an elevation, I see them both right next to each other, and that's something that wasn't readily done in ARCHICAD 25. What else? Uh, Multi-page PDF import. This is great. I'm going to drag PDF from across the screen, and now I can select you know, multiple pages, and they're all going to be placed. That's pretty great there. Let's see. They're all coming on top of each other, so you still have to do some arranging. But to be able to bring in 20 pages from a PDF all at once instead of one at a time is a huge improvement. Last up, the other major change to my life as an ARCHICAD user are the cabinet updates. Back in ARCHICAD 25, Graphsoft rebuilt all the cabinet objects. And in general, it was a pretty good improvement. Not perfect, but showed a lot of promise. ARCHICAD 26, they fixed some but not all of the issues. Overall, though, I'm really happy with the cabinets in ARCHICAD 26, and if Graphsoft will make a couple more tweaks, I would say they're not perfect, but just fantastic. So let's look at the improvements they made in 26. First off, they fixed sinks. In ARCHICAD 25, the sinks had an extra line around here, even if they're under mount. Super ugly. Graphsoft got that fixed. Very happy with that. In 25 and 26, one of the things I really like about the cabinet objects 
specifically the sinks, is that if you change the size of the sink, you get a different sink shown on plan. It's great, really needed. Now with the lines fixed there, when you do the overlap with the uh, undermount, you no longer get that. You know, you get the one line right as it, as it should be. So that's that's fantastic. That's a great improvement. Another change they made is they gave us more control over line visibility in 2D. So in floor plan, I should say. Right here, if we go to edge visibility, you can now control, well, you could control the counter edges before, but it's a little nicer displayed here. And you also have the cabinet edge visibility, so we can hide and show the cabinet there. Now in ARCHICAD 25, to get this to work, we had to make one of the lines a uh, dotted white line. It's an old trick in ARCHICAD to make a line that you can't get rid of look invisible by making it white and making it just a bunch of far spaced out dots. In ARCHICAD 26, you still need to use that trick, but you have to change which lines are the dotted lines. So it used to be the cabinet was the dotted white line, and now it's the carcass. And I'll show you why. If we make this carcass line dotted line and we make it not white, make it red, you'll see that we have this red line right here. So what I don't like about this, and it'd be great if we could control the uh, visibility of the front line here. We can't do that we're stuck with it. So if we don't make the carcass a dotted white line, we end up with three lines and that's that's just too many. You could control the number of lines by changing the 2D detail level with the model view options and go to like medium or low. But when you do that, it starts messing up things like sync visibility. So as a result, I make the carcass a dotted white line and then I'm actually really happy with the uh, graphic display in floor plan. Not perfect, I don't want to have to do that workaround, but once you set this workaround up and you save it as a favorite, it's a non-issue. And then what I like is if you select this, you can still see that carcass kind of dotted there, which could have some use. But now the dot that does appear, the dashed line that does appear, is the exact size of your cabinet. Whereas in ARCHICAD 25, I would actually have that line show up and that line disappeared. And uh, when you did that, you were kind of getting some false readings about the size of the cabinet. Okay. Similarly, by having the edge visibility for cabinets, being able to turn on and off, it allows us to show or hide the edges of an overhead cabinet. In ARCHICAD 25, I had to do that dotted white line to get the display right. And then when I did that dotted white line, I lost the ability to see the edges of the cabinet. But now I can turn on and off the edges. And then I still do that dotted white line because if I don't, I get you know, more lines than I need, but not the end of the world. It, it does what I need to do. That dotted white line is basically the face of the cabinet, not the face of the door. So do what you want. I want uh, clean lines there. Now, the other big improvement to cabinets is that if you go to model view options and you go down to miscellaneous settings for library parts, you can control the opening lines in 3D. So you can show or hide cabinet door opening lines. What that means in elevation is we can now see cabinet door swings. And this works if, you know, if the cabinet does that, you'll see that. If it does that, you get that. You can also flip which way the hinge is. So if you want it on hinge side or the, the not door side, I don't know what that's called at the moment, but you can get it to look like that if you're in Europe and you want it reversed. But this is fantastic. And it's one of those things that's like, this is why I want to use ARCHICAD 26 instead of ARCHICAD 25. I gave up showing uh, cabinet door swings and drawings years ago because I didn't want to draw them in by hand. It's just too much effort. So I just gave up and said, you know what? I don't need to show that my drawings, I just won't show it because I don't want to waste the time. But now it's automated and it looks good and it's going to be perfect. So now I get to show s cabinet swings again in my drawings after like a decade of not showing them. So I'm super thrilled that this feature is here in ARCHICAD 26. And if nothing else, if ARCHICAD 25 and 26 are basically the same version, for whatever reasons uh, your feelings are, having cabinet swings is reason enough to upgrade. Maybe not, you know, the grandest reason, but it makes 26 fundamentally better than 25. Cabinets are still not perfect, right? They're good, I'm happy, but here's a couple improvements that I really want to see. So Graphsoft, I hope you're listening. One, in ARCHICAD 25 and 26, you still can't show two drawers on the top of a single cabinet. So in ARCHICAD 24 and earlier, you could have one cabinet object and you could have two drawers at tops at the top or you could have one drawer you got to pick in archicad 25 you get one drawer 
So if you have a situation like, like this, you can't do that unless you have two objects, which is wrong. So you either build it wrong to get the right number of drawers, or you build it right and you have the wrong number of drawers. So Graphsoft, please fix that to give us the option because two drawers is a thing that exists and we want to be able to do that. This screenshot right here that I've pasted into ARCHICAD is my biggest wish for the next version of ARCHICAD. I've shared this with Graphisoft in the past. I hope someone is watching this video from Graphisoft who is working on the cabinets because please make this change. It would make everyone's life better or everyone who uses the cabinet objects in ARCHICAD. Right now, the behavior of handle location and foot location in ARCHICAD 25 and 26 behaves incorrectly when you resize a cabinet. What happens is when you make a cabinet wider or shorter, the distance between the handle and the edge of the cabinet here, the distance between the handle and the center of the cabinet here, and the distance between the foot and the edge of the cabinet here resets. And what happens is the distance from the foot to the center of the cabinet or the distance of the handle from the side of the cabinet remains fixed. And that's wrong, just flat out wrong. No one wants that ever. What we want is we want when a cabinet resizes for the distance between the handle and the edge to stay the same, or the distance to the handle to the center to stay the same, or the distance from the edge to the foot to stay the same. So on the left, correct behavior. On the right, ARCHICAD 25 and 26, incorrect behavior. Graphsoft, please fix this. It's wrong. It should be easy to fix. It would make using the cabinet objects in ARCHICAD 25 and 26 so much better, and it would make them inarguably better than the previous ARCHICAD cabinet objects. This is so annoying. When I'm working on a kitchen and I take a three foot cabinet and I make it three foot six, and I have to fix all the handles. Same thing happens when you change the height that the handle will shift in height to like stay centered or reset. It's really annoying. So please fix that. Well, that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much. Let me know what I missed, what you disagree with, or what you agree with. Please leave a comment below. And also, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.